Hey everyone, Howie Fisher from Fisher's Flies. Thanks for checking in. Today I'm tying up a classic spring dry fly. This is the March Brown dry fly. It's a uh, one of the larger hatches here in most places on the East Coast, so hopefully you enjoy this video. For the hook today, I'm using an A-Rex Freshwater 503 in size 12. This is one of their dry fly hooks. For the thread today, I'm using 140 denier in brown, and I'm using 140 denier specifically for the ribbing of the fly, which you'll see in a later step. I'm going to go ahead and get started with my thread, and I'm going to leave a hook eye length behind the eye itself to allow for some extra room when finishing the fly. For the tail, I'm using a Whiting CDL. This is their tailing pack. Comes in a bunch of different colors. Here I'm using Badger dyed copper olive. This is a really cool color and I like it specifically for uh, tails on March Browns and really any mayfly. But CDL is super durable um, and super versatile as well. The tail, I'm going to measure it a length, uh, a hook shank in length, and then transfer that over to my other hand so I can tie this backwards. Once I've got that tied in, I'm going to go ahead and bring my thread to about the point where I started my thread on the shank and snip off that. And I'm really doing that just to create an even body. For the wing today, I'm using Trigger Point from EP in Cinnamon Caddis. So this is Enrico Puglisi's dry fly material. I'm going to go ahead and grab about a, you could say a pencil width or half a pencil width, somewhere around there. And I'm going to go ahead and take about a two or three inch piece, as you see here, and just secure it using cross wraps. So I'm going to do two wraps one direction and then situate it on the top of the hook shank and then take two wraps opposite direction. Then I'm going to go ahead and take some additional wraps to really just secure it, make sure it's exactly where I want it, and make sure that those wings are in the position that they should be. You want to give yourself a little bit of extra playroom on this material, which is why a two to three inch piece is kind of nice to work with. It's not too much, doesn't create too much waste, but gives you enough room to work. So I'm going to just pull these fibers forward to give myself some extra working room. And then I'm going to grab my dubbing, which here is ultra dry dubbing in tan. This is one of Fulling Mill's new products, new dubbings. This has their uh, ultra dry yarn in it, as well as two other materials. And it is a really nice waterproof dubbing. So the ultra dry yarn, if you've never used it, is actually pre, uh, pre-soaked with floatant so it really just helps the fly float a little bit better so as you see here i'm actually reverse dubbing this so i'm going to start with my dubbing right behind the wing and i'm going to take my dubbing back to the tail i'm going to add just a little bit more here and then once i get it where i want it i'm going to rib the body with this thread which again is why i chose or why i choose 140 denier just gives a little bit of that darker contrast on this body. For the hackle here today, I'm using a combination of whiting, and this is, I like to use furnace and grizzly. You can use brown if you'd like, or coachman brown, whatever you have handy will work just fine as long as it's that brown color to allow for that uh, variegation and, and uh, contrasting colors. So I'm going to go ahead and prepare these feathers by stripping some fibers from the very bottom and on the top side to make sure that these wrap the right way. I'm then going to secure it behind and in front of, again, pulling my wing forward just to allow for a little bit of extra room. I'm going to go ahead and take one wrap behind the grizzly hackle, starting with the brown, and then I'm going to go ahead and take two more wraps behind the wings and then move my hackle in front of the wings. And I'm gonna take two more wraps in front of the wings with this brown before securing it. So again, I'm gonna secure it with two wraps and then take one wrap on the bear shank itself. I'm gonna go ahead and snip that brown out. And then I'm gonna take 
two full wraps behind the wings with this grizzly and then two full wraps in front of the wings. If you prefer, you can just use a brown saddle here or a, um, a variant, a uh, grizzly variant, if you will, uh, which Whiting also makes. Uh, this is traditionally how these Catskill style flies were tied. And it does allow for a nice variegation, like I said, so you get two color combinations and the additional floatability. If you have it, you can also obviously use Cree here, which achieves the same uh, color combination. For the wing, I'm going to snip this about the hook shank in length. Or if you prefer, you can just snip these wings slightly longer than the hackle fibers themselves. To finish my fly, I'm going to hit it with just a little bit of solar as bone dry. You can also use head cement or Sally Hansen's just for that added durability. Again, here we have a March Brown dry fly pattern, super common spring hatch here in the East. So tie them up, fish them, let us know what you think. Thanks for checking in.